Hey guys, Kathy here, and uh, I'm doing something different now on my videos. Uh, so if you're here for soap video, I'm no longer doing soap. I'm delving into ceramics. So I thought I'd share with you. Now, I was doing like a low fire clay. Uh, you can fire them at different temperatures. Um, and I've used up all my low fire clay, and I wanted to try something different. And this is a uh, middle firing clay fires at a hotter temperature uses different glazes and I thought well this is a good time to experiment with my new clay I haven't used it before um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out some test tiles um, I don't have my own kiln I go and rent a kiln from a business here in town um, so I get a full kiln load together and then I take it in and she fires it all for me. Bisque fires it. I bring it home, glaze them all, take them back again for another load full of glazing firing. So um, I, I thought this is a good time. I'll play around with this. I'll make other things and show you what I'm making. It's going to be quite a process. Probably going to take me a couple months to get a kiln load put together because I'm not like I don't do this all day long. So. But anyway, I thought I'd just share it with you since I do still have my channel. We'll just do some different things on the channel. No different than if I was doing another craft video or, say, my gardening videos, whatever. But we're going to stick with clay this time. So what I've done here is I've rolled out some, some clay and I use these as a guide, a thickness guide on either side. Just to make sure I've got an even thickness all throughout. And... I'm going to try six different glazes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out six of these in this cute little shape. And on each one, I'm putting a letter, A through F, because I have six different glazes. So I'm going to imprint the letter on each one, cut it out, and then that way I can write down what glaze I used on A etc etc so just to see how they turn out with this darker clay so this fires it's going to be supposedly almost black when it comes out um, so that's why I want to see what the glazes look like on the black clay so uh, anyway what we're gonna do I'm gonna uh, start here kind of at the top maybe I'll move this I'm going to uh, imprint this little letter A first with my, this, they call this a pony roller. Um, by the way, all of my materials I buy from a, a place called Sounding Stone. It's here in Canada. So all my glazes, um, uh, most of my tools, my clay, um, these, however, these I bought on Amazon. It's a whole alphabet full of them. So there's my A. And what I'm going to do now to get smooth edges, I'm going to take some, you could use saran wrap, I guess. I use press and seal. And I just kind of lay it on top gently. And I can kind of see where my letter's at right here, right? And then I take my little cookie cutter, you can do any shape, and I'm just centering that A right in the center of my cookie cutter. Push down, and then I can take my pony roller and kind of finish that out. Now what this does, if you were to rig, like take this and just put it straight into the clay, uh, not only would it stick more onto the cookie cutter, <laughs> but it would give you sharp straight edges all the way around. This way you can tell it's going to give you a smooth edge. And let me take this out gently. Oops, I guess I could have pressed a little more, but we'll gently. But as you can see, it kind of slopes down. It gives you a nice smooth edge and you can finish smoothing that out with your fingers if you'd like but anyway there's my letter A and I'm going to put this off to the side to dry 
And we're going to continue on. So there's the A. We'll put him over here. Um, going with letter B and so on. So we'll go ahead and roll that again. And taking the press and seal again, trying to find where that square is and center it. And use this again just to get right down to the uh, base, gently pulling up and there we go. That one came out much better. And there's my letter B. It's just kind of smoothing around the edges just a bit. Using that plastic, you shouldn't need to smooth too much if you get it pressed all the way down. So anyway, there's the B, and I'll continue on and do all six of them, and uh, we'll take a final shot before we send them off to be bisque fired. Okay, so here we go. We've got them all cut out A through F. And when we come back, they'll be bisque fired and I'll show you what we're going to be glazing them with. So we will be right back. Okay, uh, we're back and uh, I've got my, my pieces back from the pottery shop and they've been bisque fired. So you can hear they have that nice ting to them. They're nice and tough. Um, for some reason, we've got this spotting going on. I'm not sure whether that had to do with um, me rolling them on the same uh, thing as I was doing the white clay. I don't know if that's my fault or if that's something to do with being bisque fired in with other pieces. Uh, because I had taken my whole load of pieces and so she bisque fired them along with the white clay pieces. Um, so it could be because they were all together in the same kiln. But anyway, we're going to cover this with a, a nice glazes anyway. Um, these are my test tiles. So uh, I have written down somewhere. Now I don't know. Here it is. Um, I wrote down on my pad here. Uh, a through F and then what color I am using on each tile so I know what they are when I get them back. Uh, I neglected to do that on, there's a few pieces here um, that I put under glaze on before they were bis fired and I can't remember the colors <laughs> from what they were. This one I know I think was the cotton tail because it's a white and I'm not sure what green I used and I'm not sure which red I used. So my bad, but anyway, they, they did turn out pretty cool. I really like this one. Um, you can see it's kind of got a, a mountain. This is a texture roller I used. A mountain with some pine trees. So just for a test tile, thought I would do that. I I painted it before it was bisque, bisque fired. Now I'm going to be covering this with a clear glaze. Um, same with uh, this one. I'll cover it with clear. And then I might do some more colors on this one. Uh, and then paint clear over it and fire it as well. Anyway, there's, those are some of the... Uh, other fun. So anyway, it's a good idea if you're testing a glaze <laughs> to write it down. Uh, otherwise, you're like me and you're like, oh, what freaking color did I use? So anyway, uh, we're going to have fun with this one. So um, I have my little pad here of what to put on each one. And the first one I'm going with, which is A here, is um, it's a glaze. These are all by Mako. Uh, again, I'm using a coffee color Plainsman clay. It's a mid-firing clay. Fire's hotter, um, but not quite a high fire, obviously. 
but anyway, so these are uh, cone five six glazes. Uh, this one is blue hydrangea, and if you can see the label, uh, it's got these little crystals in it that are supposed to kind of burst uh, in with the color. Um, so on A, I was just going to do the inside, but since this is going to be such a cool effect, I think on this particular tile, I'm going to do the entire face of the tile with this. So I'm going to try and stop though before I get to the very edge because this particular glaze is supposed to run a little bit. Um, they say apply two to three coats. And uh, during your last coat, use your brush to evenly distribute the crystals over the top two thirds of the piece. That's if you're if you have something that it's going to run down. Um, but I'm going to still try and stay away from the edge a bit. So let me put B down there. So, oops, beautiful color on the inside. And uh, I'm going to use this fan brush, and you're supposed to stir it up well uh, because this settles, and all those little crystals, I guess, has settled to the the bottom somewhat. Let's see, it's not as a uh, not as chunky as another glaze I used. Um, had really chunky crystals in it. This doesn't seem to have that. It's just got like, you can see just little tiny ones. Anyway, we're going to keep stirring. It said to stir it, don't shake it. So I imagine you don't want little air bubbles in your glaze. But I'm going to try and get all these pieces done. Um, I also have a dish. And then I'll take them back into the uh, shop. So you're supposed to do, how many coats did I say? Two to three coats. So we'll do one and let it dry. And uh, like I said, I'm just kind of stay away from the edges a bit. So there's, there's coat one, and I'm just going to set this back here. And we'll let this dry before we do a second coat. And then we'll move on to B, which is a coral color. Here, this is uh, the Mako SW205 Coral. Uh, this is the ice glazes for stoneware. And this as well says, uh, provides a hint of color with one coat, deeper color with two or three coats, but remaining translucent. Uh, provides a light pink gloss with one coat and deeper pink with three. So I think this one I'm just going to use in the square here. And I will probably do three coats. I'm going to switch brushes and just use use this brush. So we'll stir it up here first. I just opened all of these. Haven't tried them yet. I did want to mention, I don't know if you can see this on my arms. I, um, I had this like reaction and then you know what? I think it is due to the clay. I've tried narrowing down different different things and I honestly think it's a reaction to this clay. <laughs> I have super sensitive skin and uh, anyway so I have to when I'm working with it uh, when I'm done I have to really wash my hands well. Anyway this one so just kind of kind of give it a thick a thick coat in the middle here and we'll let that dry um, and move on to the next let's see I think I have a couple more brushes so we'll just let this guy hang out in there so there's B this was the coral now we're moving on to 
a color that's called Blue Surf. And it looks like kind of a, a cross between uh, green and blue. A very cool looking color. Um, so this one as well. Um, let's see. It says it's formulated for mid-range, which is this, and high fire. Uh, shake or stir well, apply to bisque, apply one coat if dipping or spraying, two to three if brushing. So we'll shake this one and give it a good coat and let it dry just like the others. And with each of these, I think I'm going to do three coats, but I won't make you sit around and wait for three coats. We'll just do these one at a time. So look at that. It looks gray really dark dark gray so again we're going to just do into the middle and a nice thick this will be cool to see these uh i'm going to take like before and after pictures and put them on on my instagram so okay th there's thick coat number one of the blue surf next we have lemon meringue guess what color that is <laughs> yes it's yellow so we'll get another another brush luckily i have quite a few brushes but i'm gonna have to start cleaning them i think <laughs> anyway we'll stir this one up um it says, let's see, should be a bright yellow, depending on application. So I imagine the same thing. If you're only doing one coat, it's going to be very light. But I'll be doing three. Because I want the, the bright color. Plus I'm going over dark clay. So I think the more coats, the better. Okay, so I'll give it a nice, thick drizzle in there and let that dry up so that was lemon meringue all right now we have chambray chambray i guess that's how you pronounce it uh this is e okay so let me get one of my smaller brushes i'm running out of brushes here Oh, is this one? This is like a purpley color. Um, yep, one to three coats again. It's all pretty much the same. Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful color? All right, so we're going to stir it up really good. Doo -doo -doo. I can't wait to see how these come out. Okay. Again, right into the middle. Do, 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 do. Nice and thick. And off to dry. And our last color is called Fool's Gold. Um, it's not gold. It's like a, a really dark color that's supposed to break over texture and show some kind of goldy tones I guess so this one says um, a gloss semi-transparent glaze consisting of a rich brown base with tiny gold metallic flecks the variation of glaze depends on application the thicker the application the more homogeneous the color will be the glaze will break translucent and pull darker around surface textures so it says stir well and apply two to three coats to the bisque, allow it to dry, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm out of decent brushes. Um, yeah, I don't have any more brushes. So let's see. I'm going to have to use this little one. I think I'm going to, sorry if my arm's in the way here. I'm cleaning up scraping off the chambray off the last one uh towel wipe my finger off and then we're just gonna 
wash this brush off in some clean water. And then I'll finish cleaning it off with the paper towel. Because I still have some on the stem here of the paintbrush. Okay. All right. So we'll go in here and see this fool's gold. And we'll stir this up. Look at that. It looks like it's black. So stir, stir. I'm not seeing any flecks of gold, but they're supposedly there. So, okay. We'll fill up this little center portion. Nice and thick coat right there. And we'll put him off to dry. So like I said, I'm going to do each of these again. And then um, on the outside edges, actually, of these, uh, since these are going to be a gloss color, on the inside, I'm going to go over this part with the clear glaze. I do have a clear glaze I'm going to use, which is the Mako Stoneware Glazes Zinc Free Clear Glaze. Uh, so I will be going over those and uh, like right up to the edge, I think, not all the way around. And I'm not glazing the bottom of these. So anyway, we'll let that dry. Now I'm going to show you, I have a, put you here. Uh, where's my other lid? This goes with that. That goes with that. I'm missing. Oh, well, I'll look for it. It's got to be around here. Some... Oh, there it is. I was missing my pink lid for my coral. So, okay. Um, I also did, I did a little dish. Um, I used one of these, uh, slab of lump rump mold things textured it with a roller um and then let that dry and just kind of as a test dish as you can tell it's also got these little spots of stuff all over um but anyway i think i'm going to try one of these glazes on i might layer glazes so i think i'm going to use this yellow uh this lemon meringue. I want some nice, bright, cheerful kind of things going on here. So I'm just gonna, I should have used a bigger brush, but that's okay. I'm gonna use the yellow all over this inside and then on the rim, kind of coming down into the yellow I think I'm going to use that hydrangea color. So anyway, I'm going to do a few coats of this. Let each coat dry before putting on the next. We're supposed to be getting nasty weather this weekend. Uh, freezing rain and ice and stuff. It's like winter's finally showing its ugly head. We've had it pretty easy so far. Uh, anyway. So we're just going to kind of lay a thick coat of this on, let it dry, do another coat, etc. until we get three coats of this on. And then I'm going to do the blue hydrangea. So I won't make you watch all three coats and drying etc because that's like really boring but anyway you know what i'm gonna do so like i said three coats of the lemon meringue uh, once those are dry i'm going to take that hydrangea which is this one we did with the crystals in it and i'm going to kind of go around here and just just barely come over the yellow uh, my thought is maybe it'll it'll run 
a little bit into the yellow with those crystals. Um, anyway, we'll see what this one turns out to be. Uh, I'm excited. I, I, it's fun to test different things. So, um, these though, in the meantime, I'm going to, I think I'm just going to clear glaze all of these and just to see how they turn out. Um, so I won't make you watch that. Uh, anyway, when we come back, I'll have had these uh, glazed and fired and we'll see the final results. So we'll be back for that in just a second. I'm back and I have my glazed pieces back. Um, there's some disappointments and some that I'm pretty happy with. The one thing I'll mention is um, I didn't think about the fact that the glaze would melt into these uh, letters and kind of obscure them. <laughs> so luckily I know which is which. <laughs> but uh, I suppose if I had uh, white clay, I could have written or carved into the back. I could have still carved into the back, I guess, with my needle tool. Uh, but anyway, this is what we've got. Uh, the first one is the... Um, blue hydrangea glaze from Mako and I really like how this one came out uh, very pretty with the the explosions from the crystals in there it's very nice I think this has something to do with the clay so this is and I don't think I'm gonna buy this clay anymore just because it's doing something funky to my skin <laughs> I think I'm going to have to start wearing gloves to work with the rest of it. But uh, but anyway, this clay, I think it bubbles a bit. Um, anyway, it, it turned out pretty cool. Very nice and shiny and smooth, and I love the color. Uh, blue hydrangea, I really like this one. Uh, the second one is the uh, coral. That's uh, this one. Stoneware Ice Glaze in Coral. And... Maybe I needed another coat on here, but uh, that's not bad. That's not a bad color. And you can still see my little bee in there, so I might have needed to just put another coat in there, but that's not bad. And then I used the clear glaze all the way around it, so that's the coral. Uh, the third one is not really kind of what it looks like on the label. Uh, this is the... Uh, Blue Surf. You see on the label, it looks kind of like green and blue. Um, and this is what it turned out to be. Kind of like a starry blue. It's a, it's unique. Maybe over a larger area, on a lighter clay, different colors would show up. But uh, that's what Blue Surf is. Uh, now the one I'm I'm disappointed with, and it's the uh, lemon meringue, and I didn't know this was a matte glaze. Um, anyway, I think if I'd have put more another coat or two maybe on it, and then covered it with clear, but it's it's matte and it kind of bleached out, and I'm just really not happy with it. Um, I did also use it on this this plate and you can see how that turned out with it's just I'm not thrilled anyway since this was a test <laughs> you know you live and learn and this I used the blue hydrangea all around the edges but I only put like one one heavy coat on so um, I could have used more anyway that's my my failure color and it's probably my fault because I didn't know it was a matte but anyway so that's that's that one uh, the next one is uh, the chambray. This is a very light, purpley looking color on the label. And on my tile, it looks a bit more bluish to me. Anyway, that's chambray on my dark clay. So maybe on a lighter clay, it would look different. And the last one is pretty cool. The last one is the Fool's Gold. If you can see that see how it turns lighter on their their tile I think because they use light clay I use dark clay so what I came out with was virtually black with the little speckles of gold in it I really 
I really like that. I think it turned out really cool. And as you can see, I used, I did use the clear gloss on all except for this one, um, but they turned out pretty cool. And then I made these little, uh, just little like coaster size, and I just used clear on this one. You can see it's got a little flower texture. And I just used some clear on that. It came out pretty cool. Uh, this one I painted with some underglaze before it was bisked. Or no, I painted after, I think. Anyway, and then I put clear over the top. And that one turned out pretty cute. So I think underglazes and the clear glaze would work really well on this clay. Uh, this one I used a texture roller of some mountains and trees and stuff. Uh, and then cut it out with a round cookie cutter. And that I uh, coated with clear. And that turned out really cool. Like that. And, and this one I just kind of hacked around, put a few different colors on, and then coated it with clear just to see. Um, anyway, I love the texture. Uh, I left the back unglazed, naturally. Um, so anyway, it was, it was fun testing these colors. Um, I do have some other pieces uh, that I think I know which things I want to use on them now out of these glazes. So it's good to see how they turned out. I'll show you, actually, I'll probably bring you over to my shelf here and show you. Um, I made, ouch, I made a uh, gingerbread house. And uh, that's kind of a, a test run for some Christmas gifts. This one will be for me, um, but I'm going to get some white clay. And since my skin's reacting to this dark stuff, I'm going to get white clay from now on and, and do it with the white clay. Um, but you can buy these kits on Amazon with the cookie cutters. And then you fit the pieces together to do these little 3D um, guys. They also have a sleigh. I didn't make a sleigh, but they have the little deer and tree and snowman. Uh, and then I made like a, a garden bell. I painted with some underglaze. And I made an angel here for myself, painted with some underglaze. I put the wings, angel wings, on a heart. Oops. And uh, be careful with these guys as they break easy. So anyway, that's, that's my little angel. I can't wait to get him fired. And then uh, I've made some bowls down here, different shapes. Uh, just to experiment with. Oops, get this back in the light. I really like this one. Um, it's got some flower, flower designs. Have to clean up the edges a bit. And then I put a little foot on it and carved in there and put my little letter K. So anyway, just some, some fun things that I'm working on. I have more on the other shelves, but... Uh, We'll save that for another day. But anyway, uh, fun to work with the glazes and see how they turn out and, you know, trial and error. Like I said, I don't think I'll get any more of this clay just because it's not agreeing with my skin. And if you have sensitive skin, that's something you want to keep in mind. My gal at the pottery shop said she had some red clay that she bought and was working with and her skin started reacting with it as well. So something I think about the colored clays you kind of have to watch out for sometimes. Uh, they might have something in them that your skin will react with. But I mean, I'm not itching or anything, but it definitely is doing something weird. So <laughs> anyway, time to put on the gloves. So, uh, but that's my little glaze test. And thanks for hanging in there with me if that's anything you're interested in. It's fun to work with clay. Uh, and make different things and like I said, I, I'm excited to get these gingerbread houses made for next Christmas I have some other ideas possibly a ceramic Christmas card idea that's uh, rolling around in my head So if I decide to do that, I will do a little video of it. Oh, and I also bought some uh... Oh gosh, I suppose I can't get this open. Anyway, I bought some focal uh, um, stones 
and I kind of want to make some things for my daughter and for my grandkids and for me. Anyway, this is a this is a turquoise um, a turquoise moon. I thought it would be really cool for something for me. And then I've got some other. Oh gosh, sorry, I'm moving you around a lot. You can see my grandson's favorite color is blue, so I might embed something like this into a bowl for him. Um, here's some green. Oops. Here's some, you can see, little green stones I thought I would put in something for my daughter. Uh, I've got some purple and pink. Anyway, more fun stuff to make. So, uh, clay is a fun hobby. So anyway, thanks for staking, sticking, staking with me, <laughs> and uh, give uh, give ceramics a try if you have a shop in your area. It's really fun to do. So that's it for now. I'll let you go, and we'll catch you on the next video. Bye for now.